hey Santa. Ho, oh, oh, hey kid, how's it going? Fine. Oh, hey, listen though, I'm I'm busy actually. Um, I'm gonna be out of town this Christmas, so why don't you just go ahead and tell me how you're gonna be lazy this year, and we can get all that over with. Oh, oh, don't even worry. This year's movie is about a Christmas icon far lazier than I am. Uh huh. And who might that be? Yo, Santa, who ate all my birthday cake? You did, fat ass. Man, I'm outing people over later and all we got's fish and bread. How am I supposed to feed all these people with fish and bread? Oh, I don't know why I let him crash at my place. There were some movies. Terrible movies. Movies so awful. No one would touch. Then came a mat. Sad little mat. Matt then decided these movies to watch. Today's episode A Christmas Journey. Happy Boxing Day Eve, everyone. I'm Cold Matt, and today we got an odd one, both in content and in backstory. A Christmas Journey is a Christian animated movie from director Scott Cawthon, the creator of the hit video game Five Nights at Freddy's. And yeah, I kind of see it actually. Like these are already not the best character designs, but knowing this was made by the same guy using the same methods he used to make this, makes these guys just a little more uncanny. Anyways, good luck finding out anything else about this movie, as there's no IMDb page and Cawthon is the only one credited. He does thank some people, mostly his own family, so maybe this is the voice cast? That makes sense to me. I should maybe also mention that this was released in 2006, which was probably the tail end of when this looked okay. Not that this is totally awful animation. I mean, it's not even close to the worst CG in a Christmas special. But it reminds me of really early VeggieTales, except VeggieTales was specifically designed to have simple, easy-to-animate designs, where our buddy Scott decided to go for humans, who don't quite look right. So let's see what a religious holiday movie from the man behind the slaughter looks like. This is A Christmas Journey. A story about the gifts God gives. That's, that's the full title. Our story begins in the town of Meaningful. You know, this movie is almost too subtle. Well, at least we know this isn't where the Five Nights at Freddy's lore takes place, because none of that shit means anything. We meet Maxwell, whose mother always goes away on business trips during Christmas, leaving he and his sister Steffi with their Christmas-impaired grandpa, who makes them do chores all day. A real Cinderella story. Grandpa's watching the game show win a boat and a new pair of pants, where apparently the only prizes are boats and pants. Welcome back to win a boat and a new pair of pants! We welcome back our returning champion today who has won a total of two boats and 15 pairs of pants. Yeah, I might watch that actually. And we learn things are not so good in Grandpa's house. Now be a lamb and go let Gladys out of her pen. It's a nice day, she'll want to walk around. And get the mail! Grandpa, Gladys's pen fell down six months ago, and the mailman doesn't deliver here anymore. Not since- Well then I guess breakfast isn't delivered either! You think that's bad? Apparently Steffi is sleeping in a box, even though her loving brother gets a bed. No, I'm sure she has a bed. Just like, off-screen, where we don't have to animate it. Maxwell waxes poetic about the meaning of Christmas, in a way that feels... familiar. Anyways, they get invited to a Christmas party that Grandpa won't take them to, but he says they can go themselves. The delivery of some of these lines is a little awkward, which is too bad, because I think some of these lines could be really funny. You don't need no Christmas party. You've got me! Ha! I'll put on a red shirt. 
I don't have a red shirt. I'll wear this shirt! Anyways, determined to learn the meaning of Christmas for his sister, Maxwell decides they'll walk to the party, but get lost on the way there. What? What's that? What's that noise? Uh, the same icy footstep sound effect that's been playing the whole movie. I'm coming, wait! It, it's getting on my nerves a little bit, honestly. Well, it turns out to be a kindly old man with a little trick up his sleeve. Why would you want to help us? Well, because... I'm an angel. You mean like, from God? Yes, like, from God. But what does God have to do with Christmas? Okay, so like, that's a stupid question. There's no way in hell you can grow up anywhere in the Western world and not know that Christmas is the birthday of Jesus. But this bitch overreacts so hard. Uh, what? <coughs> <laughs> you okay? Want some water? Er, snow? I'm good. I love him. But before they get to the party, they see a homeless man sitting on the street. Well, okay then. We don't want to miss the party. I guess God will take care of him. Come on. Truly the most Christian reaction. Don't you have like a Christmas sleigh? I'm not Santa. Or a Christmas rocket? Too dangerous. Christmas train? Lawsuit. Boat? Boat? Boat. Seriously, you want a Christmas boat to ride to town in? Well, what can you do? Sometimes the fastest road isn't the road you were meant to take. Wow, you can do something. You can write fortune cookies. Well, there's another joke that could be funny with better delivery. I'll admit it, Cawthon can be a funny writer. They also come across a woman whose house is being foreclosed and an orphanage that can't afford toys. I'm sure neither of these things will be relevant later. You aren't exactly on the invitation. You could be an uncle. It should be a common name, though. Something simple. Uncle... Jim? Bill? Bob? Rodriguez? This is... Oh, uh, Uncle Rodriguez. What was wrong with Jim or Bob? Maxwell approaches the kids who live there to ask what Christmas is about, and they tell him it's about getting toys. And because Angel Rodriguez said he'd get a blessing, he gets... bottled toys? But the worst South Park character says he's got it all wrong. Christmas, just like the rest of the holidays, is all about how much food you can cram into your mouth before the party is over. It's all about the food, kid. What? Food? Like, the mom comes by and says it's about money, so you'd think these are supposed to be cynical reasons for Christmas? But who thinks Christmas is about food? Hey, don't get me wrong, I love the food this time of year, present company excluded, but like... That's not something anyone thinks Christmas is about, cynical or otherwise. Come on, let's take these home with us. Oh, that's it? You're just gonna leave after like five minutes? After you trekked through the woods to get here? I guess it just feels like the people who really needed something didn't get anything. But the people who already had everything just got more. That's capitalism, baby. Thanks for your help. I think we can find our own way home. I doubt that very much, but okay. In the forest, they encounter th the ghost of St. Nicholas? And he takes them back in time to the birth of Jesus? You think they're gonna go Assassin 33 AD on him? But, uh, uh, what was wrong with Rodriguez? Why couldn't he take them back in time? Why introduce an entirely new character? Anyway, he teaches us about how Christmas is about the birth of Jesus. Whoa, totally new information, dude. No way anyone watching this could have known that already. And then he just disappears, as I suppose Santa is ought to do. This is the gift of toys that God gave us. It doesn't look like much to us because we already have everything we need. Um, your grandfather is poor and doesn't buy you things, and your mom routinely abandons you on Christmas. I don't think you have everything you need. 
Anyways, yeah, they give the toys to the orphans, the money to the lady losing her home, and the food to the homeless guy. And this is sort of the same problem I had with Assassin 33 AD, and I feel like my explanation of why was maybe not the most diplomatic, so let me make myself very clear. These films present a question. Why should we believe in God when bad things happen? It's a big question. It's a question people have been asking for ages. And by just magically getting rid of the bad things, you don't actually answer that question. Now, I am not introducing this question as some sort of gotcha to Christians. The actual answer to that question is irrelevant to the point I am trying to make. This is strictly film criticism. These films introduce a question and then don't answer it. I suppose in this film's case you could argue that the magic is supposed to be metaphorical for, like, sharing your own personal blessings. But if that's the lesson, I feel like the main character should be, like, rich kids, you know? Like, they have extravagant but emotionally empty Christmases and that motivates their search for the meaning of Christmas. I just don't think solving everyone else's problems should fall to kids who already aren't having a good Christmas. After that, Maxwell and Steffi go home, where Max meets up with Rodriguez again, and they go over what they've learned. What about Steph? What can I give to her? You've already given her something very special. You were a good example for her. You gave, and she saw you give. She watches you, and she learns from you. When she sees how you love the people around you, you're teaching her what love is. Yeah, okay, that's a fine message. And they wake up Christmas morning to share their experiences with Grandpa. Oh yeah, I have one for you too, but it's not wrapped yet. Who sells bathroom rugs in a box? That's baby Jesus. Don't know any stories about Jesus. That's okay. We know one that we can tell you. Wh why aren't they doing anything? It's, it's really creeping me out. And while the bottles manifest several toys and some food, for some reason the money one spawns video game style gold coins? Not like a stack of dollar bills? How is she supposed to pay for her house in gold coins? Also, that homeless guy is clearly Grandpa in a different outfit. And Grandpa makes amends with the mail guy. The end. And that's a Christmas journey. A story about the gifts God gives. It's alright. It's got its moments, both the laughably bad and the genuinely heartfelt. It's certainly not as bonkers as Rhapsody Street Kids or The Christmas Light, and that can be a good thing and a bad thing. I'm sure if I'd grown up with it like I did with Gaither's Pawn, I would have been fine with it as a kid. It's short, it's free on YouTube, and it's certainly interesting. So, I guess make your own call on whether you want to watch this. If you want more good, wholesome Christian content, I've got a whole playlist of it. And you know what? There is something important we can learn from this film. And that's how it connects to the FNAF lore! Grandpa is clearly Golden Freddy, and I have 18 points as to why. First off, Grandpa and Golden Freddy both have a clear distinct- Merry Christmas. Go away. We're out of wine, too? What are we supposed to drink at this party? Water? Well, kid, can't deliver presents this year. I'm converting to Judaism. <laughs>